Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to learn about line traces. Quickly, how to set up a, a regular line trace. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. I've just taken the regular first person uh, template and I've just converted it to a line trace project instead. So as you can see, it works just as you'd expect with a projectile, except it's got a line trace, which you can see nicely painted on the, uh, on the screen there. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so now that we're in a first person template or your project that you're working on, uh, what you want to do is go to the contents folder, you want to go to first person BP or your characters folder, go to the blueprint and find that your character's blueprint. Um, so now we're in here, what we want to do is we just want to scroll and zoom in to the spawn projectile if you're using a template. If not, you can just follow along with us. So we currently don't want this spawn projectile to fire, so we're going to hold Alt on the keyboard and click on the white line, and this will just disconnect the, the action between the two, so nothing will happen now. And if you've not got a, a fire action set up, uh, set one, and uh, but there's already one here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna press Control and W to uh, to duplicate this, and I'm just gonna move down. Uh, if you don't go to your project files, add an input for the left mouse button um, as fire. So off the uh, fire action, we're gonna do once it's pressed, we want to make a line trace, and we want to pick line trace by channel. Um, the reason you want to use by channel is because well, it's a bit simpler. Uh, essentially what the line trace by channel does is it looks for anything with a, with, a, with a trace response channel as visibility. You can set it to camera but visibility is quite popular. Uh, and where you would change this on your, your actors or your components is uh, if I just go to the capsule component for example on this uh, and then scroll down to collisions. Underneath the preset here you've got some options where you can, you can change these yourself. Now you can see here under the collision responses we've got trace response, we've got visibility and we've got camera. Um, this capsule component of the character currently blocks uh, camera trace responses um, but it currently ignores visibility. So this trace wouldn't actually work for this character. However, for your other objects in your scene you'll probably want to block visibility trace responses. Then this trace, uh, this line trace will collide with it and create a response. So. Now, when we press fire, we create a line trace, but the, the line trace doesn't have a start or an end location, so let's do that now. Uh, the way that I find easiest to make this, or is, is, is what I consider the, the right way to do it, is uh, I'm going to drag in the first person camera, and for our start position, we want to go off the... The camera in a first person game acts as like your eyes, so you want to go from your eyes, and whatever you can see, you want to hit. So we get the first person camera, and we get the world location. This is going to be exactly where our eyes are, um, and this is a good place to start from. Then what we want to do is we want to get where our eyes are looking forward, and we want to tell it, right, this is the forward direction, times this direction by, I don't know, a thousand meters, a thousand centimeters, and that's my range, um, and then whatever's at the end of it, end the line trace there. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to get the first person camera and we're going to get the forward vector. And this is just going to get the direction that the camera is pointing in. Um, and then this necessarily, you know, this is still in the same location as this. Um, it's just in a, in a particular direction. So we want to we want to times that by a distance, let's say. So let's, uh, no, let's not promote it. Let's times, uh, we want to times the vector by a float. So we want to get the forward direction and we want to times it by a value, which to make it simpler, we're going to promote it to a variable. And why are you hidden behind there? We move that over here. And we're just going to, I'm going to rename that to weapon range because it's going to be a weapon. Don't need that capital there. Yep, so that's now weapon range. Let's just hit compile, and we can set this range. Um, so I'm going to set this to about 2,000 to start with, uh, and this is what I'd consider as like you know, a shortish, medium range. It's pretty, it's pretty short range to be fair. In, in the land of FPS, it's, it's pretty short range. So 
weapon range. So now we've got this sort of distance, but we're not quite ready to uh, just plug that in. Uh, because we actually want to add this to what location we started from and then that will give us the end position So let's get this vector and add it to another vector. I'm actually just going to switch these around quick And then we're going to take the world location here World location in one side get the forward vector times the range to get a distance in another and then that will become our end location so essentially just to break this down, um, we're taking the world location as a start position. So where is the camera? We're then finding out which way is the camera facing. Let's push this forward, sort of um, by a, a set range. Uh, so we've got a distance in front of the camera. Uh, and then we're just adding it to the world location. So then we've got um, you know, sort, of, sort of like a track between the two keeps them in line and that gives you your end location. Now if you were to compile this and play uh, you wouldn't actually see anything although the line trace is going to be there. To make this visible we're just going to go to the draw debug type uh, and we're going to set this to four duration. Now you've got a couple of options you've got one frame duration persistent. Um, persistent is permanently on the screen for one frame is well for one frame but it goes off very quickly and for duration is, I just want you to stay on the screen for a period of time. If you drop this menu down, you can see your draw time is here, and that is five. That's a little bit too long for me, but I will show you. Uh, so now we will see the, uh, the line trace in action. So five seconds, you know, I, that's a really long time. So I actually prefer, while I'm debugging, to change this to about 2.5, which is just half the time. And then there are some other choices here. You've got the trace color um, when it hits and a trace color when it's not hit. So it'll remain red for as long as it's not hit something. And then once it's hit something, the rest of the line will become green. Um, you've also got the option to ignore yourself. Uh, so you can't shoot yourself. Uh, this is pretty much a standard. I would, I've would. i never needed to do, you know, turn this off, but um, you know, never mind. You may have a reason to, but I don't. Trace complex. If for whatever reason your um, your collisions don't seem to be detecting, uh, just give this a tick. I, again, another feature I've never needed to use, um, but I can. I, I've never made immensely complex games with a lot of uh, you know bits and pieces. But um, if something's not quite working the way you expect it, give this a tick. See if it helps. If not, then uh, it's something to try. Really. Ignore actors. This could be good for if you play multiplayer. You could if you could have all the members of your team on multiplayer uh, in an array of characters, and you can plug this in so then you can't shoot your friends, shoot anybody on your team, and you know you could have other things to to plug in there. That's essentially what it is. Great. So that's with the line trace explained. You've pretty much got a line trace there, but let's just jazz this up a little bit more, just so then we can um, enjoy it a bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly neaten this up. You know what? No, I'm not. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. So once we've done the line trace, let's just pinch a little bit of stuff from up here. So normally the projectile um, is fired and then an animation is played to suggest that the gun is firing. So what I've done is I've just selected the, uh, the mesh, the anim instance, and then the montage plane. I'm just going to drag that down. And I'm going to pop this here. I'm going to drag this and just pop it underneath. I'm going to drag that and just pop that underneath there. Connect the two. And now what we've got is if we compile, now you can see the gun is actually reacting like we've made a shot. Great. So that's that's another thing that we've done um, to make it look a little bit better. Uh, and what happens after that? After that, a projectile spawned. We don't need that. You could actually put that in. Um, so then you're getting some uh, visual feedback that something's fired from the weapon, but I would probably adjust the projectile a little bit um, so it's not also causing damage and stuff like that, and let the line trace handle it. Um, after that, we've got a sound. So let's let's select the sound, and if you hold Control, you can select both of them. Press Control and W, and we've made a copy of those. Drag those down. Put the sound there. 
and let's connect the two. So now if we press play, we've got an animation, uh, a line trace and a gun sound now. So that's, that's already looking a lot better. So the other thing that we're missing is normally when the projectile hits an object, it pushes the object back. It adds in Unreal uh, a physical impulse. Um, so it actually creates a, a physical movement. Um, what we can do, if you go back to your uh, example map and go through your Contents Explorer, uh, go to Content and I believe it's under First Person and FP Weapon and Meshes? No, it's not. It's under uh, content, third person blueprint, blueprint, and it's here under first person projectile. Uh, if we open up this, you can see here that once it receives an event that it's hit something, it checks to see if it's simulating physics, and if the object is, it applies an impulse to it. So it actually pushes the object back a little bit. Now, uh, because obviously a line trace isn't a physical object in the world, um, it doesn't do this by default. So, but what we can do is we can actually pinch all of this. I'm just going to select all of it and press Control and C for copy. I'm going to go back to our first person character now, and just over here at the side, I'm just going to press paste. So, I'm actually going to get rid of this comment, and I'm just going to I'm going to select all of this, and I'm going to drag it a little bit closer. So, let's let's make this work. So, on the projectile, it required a hit event to see what component it had hit. Now, the line trace can also do this. There's this, there's this little out hit, and if you right click and you click split, you can actually see all of the many options that you've got to choose from. So, one of them is an out hit effect little bit you can see out hit component and out hit actor this is the actual thing that it's hit in, in, a, in a component name or an actor name amongst all the other things these are the ones that I'm, I'm most interested in now this looks really ugly now you know um, so I don't I don't want to do this way if I right click and recombine that there's another way you can you can get access to that data. If you drag away, and I'm going to drag it over here, there's this uh, break hit result. And this gives you this nice little node, which gives you all that information. Let's just drag that out of the way a minute. All that information. The good thing is, you can just close that menu, and it's now it's only a small little block rather than a, a big ugly list of stuff. The only thing that we're interested in for this one is the hit component. Let's just drag it over here for now, I guess. The hit component. Now, we could plug this straight into is simulating physics, but if if what we hit is an actor, this would uh, this wouldn't like it, and it would throw an error. So, just to just to sort of prevent that from happening, I'm gonna put this into what's called an is valid. Now this is just a, a small function that just goes is this component a valid you know what the data I'm receiving is it valid as a component if it is carry on if it isn't well do this other thing um, so only if this is valid I want it to check so if it's valid let's do this next bit over here now just to make it a bit tidier yeah so if the components valid do this thing so we also need to we, we also need a target of what we're gonna hit and that's gonna be the component yep so we can now reduce this menu and you can see that it's nice just this nice little menu Rather than if we'd have split this, this would have been like a million options all over the place. Great. So what we've got is we've got our hit break result. We've hit a component. We've checked to see if it's valid. If it, you know, if it is valid and if it is simulating physics is true, 
then we want to add an impulse and then destroy see now destroy used to be it destroyed the actual projectile itself the bullet we don't want to do that because technically we'd actually destroy our character so let's just remove that last bit make sure you move move that the only other thing is as well is the target is actor uh, for the velocity so the actual impulse amount like how much force am I going to apply used to be get the velocity of my projectile times this by a hundred and then add that as a physical impulse now if I'm stood still my velocity is going to be zero times hundred which is zero so there's not going to be an impulse so we don't really want to work off the actor so I'm going to delete that and I'm actually just going to arbitrary enter some I'm just going to enter some values in here and I've been messing around with this a little bit to try and get it to match the projectile the best I could um, and if you've watched my previous video you already know these numbers um, but I enter minus 250 uh, on the X I enter 250 or 200 on the Y and my uh, not minus uh, like 200 on the, on the Z and then that's going to be times by 100 and added in as an impulse. Now, if I've not missed anything, this should give us like now a nice, neat uh, little impulse. So if we fire this, there we go. You get like a little hop off the uh, of the cubes, and you get this, you know, shot. Now, last thing you may have noticed that the line trace doesn't actually hit the crosser, which is another another problem. That's actually because this uh, template is set up for the projectile and because the gun is not actually sort of like central to the uh, to the screen they actually adjusted the crosshair to suit this so in your contents first person BP and blueprints folder you've got a first person HUD um, class if you open this up you can see that what they've done is they've taken the X and Y of the screen divided it by two and then offset the crosshair by 20 to align with the projectile. We don't want that, so I'm just gonna move that down. I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and just sever both of these uh, connections, and I'm just gonna connect these straight up. So now what you've got is this uh, crosshair which is perfectly in the center of the screen, which we've, we've programmed our uh, line trace to be in the same place. So now you'll see, no matter where you aim, your line trace is going to hit. So now you've got a functioning line trace on the template with impulse, crosser lines up, you've got your sound, and everything's a winner. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoy. If it helped, consider giving me a, a thumbs up, and if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Thank you, peace out.